every day. I swab them, prod them, examine them with torches, syringe and scrape them. Some days I feel like I could disappear into their depths. <laughs> Pupils, black bottomless pits I have fallen into on better days, reveal their network of crisscrossing crumbling blood snakes. I shine my light on so many blind spots. Ears, blocked to the outer world, mostly not listening, deafened by wax. I blast them with my spray so they will hear. Nostrils. <laughs> Oceans of snot. Mucusy seas at high tide spilling onto the shores of my carpet. Olfactory numbness to the stench outside. I plunge my swab ore into their depths and bring fresh air. Mouths. Gaping lunar parks. Uvulas dangling down midline like useless red penises. <laughs> My tongue depressor makes them gag and vomit up their truths. And umbilicus, the final wrench from mother, filled with lint and disrespect. <laughs> A halfway house of masturbation. <laughs> I leave them well enough alone. Not true orifices anymore, but walled off wounds. Bulbous. <laughs> Gaping, clam like fronds, greedy and slimy. They flap in the wind and swallow my speculum with ease. Or freeze like cold, stunned mullets shouting, Shop closed! <laughs> <laughs> and sweet little bum holes. <laughs> my favourite. <laughs> closed to the world. Winking with honesty. <laughs> that shit lies behind every turn. <laughs> orifices are my days. And if it's not orifices I stare into, then I fall into the black hole of their souls. <laughs> Monday morning at the clinic. <laughs> Merle and her lonely, swollen legs are back again. I open and close my wooden jaw, a ventriloquist dummy wearing a stethoscope. Someone else's words emerge. In return, Merle speaks lovingly of her sherry and of her duck, who fit the district nurse, and of the dance contest she won in 1959 at the Maison Deluxe. Now a cafe filled with trendies spilling out onto the footpath. They reluctantly move their chairs to let her wheelchair pass, barely lifting their eyes from the entertainment guide. Little page, little traitor. It settles in, starts to grow daffodils in pots, folds neat piles of washing into baskets, bakes chocolate cakes with sprinkles on top. <laughs> then, once it pretends that this is finally home, it slowly gets up, stands on its stubby little legs, stretches its rubbery arms above its head, yawns lazily and starts to stroll around the house. It points to second-hand bookshelves and peeling paint, to cardboard boxes in the corner still unpacked, it laughs at paths of unsorted papers that have been carted from place to place to place. I want to clutch this dirty little heart of mine, scoundrel in my life, restless chamber of blood. It's never happy where it is. My heart has set up shop in my brain, roaming around, climbing over ridges of grey matter, staring out from behind my eyes, riding my optic nerves, taking control from behind the empty pupils. It wants to move again, to a different shore. Always homeward bound, but never really home. I breathe deeply and stick a finger down my throat. And I could vomit up the bastard, lazy good-for-nothing pump. Crouch over the toilet bowl and let it spill out into the purple disinfectant. 
I know its tricks. It'll try to hang on to the insides of my cheeks with all its might. Stubborn bugger. My heart drops to its knees and pleads for mercy. It will kiss my tongue with its sticky lips, <laughs> banging helplessly against the back of my teeth, vacuum sealing itself against every drop of saliva. It's over, I say, gagging. Get out! <laughs> it lands on the bathroom floor. Then it winks at me, disappears through the doorway, out into the garden, across the street, and its fat little legs are running as fast as they can, and it heads over to the highway. Off again, in search of yet another home. Well, good riddance. <laughs> but through the drone of the trucks in the distance, I can hear my heart yelling back at me. <laughs>